Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. We've made it to the top 10 of the 49ers roster countdown. And unlikely candidate, perhaps, at number 10, maybe not talent-wise, uh, deserves to be up here. But as far as consistency and versatility and one of the only mainstays in the interior of the offensive line, Daniel Brunskill comes in at number 10. And, you know, whenever we were doing these rankings and kind of pairing numbers, it was just hard to keep him out of the top 10. Yeah, there are definitely far more talented players um, ranked lower than him, um, even at premium positions. But when you look at the 2022 year, Trey Lance being comfortable and not harassed up the middle is at a priority for this team. And Daniel Brunskill is the only returning guy in there. Nobody else has literally any starts. Uh, if you're looking at Aaron Banks stepping at left guard, you're looking at maybe Jake Brindell. We'll talk about him. Three career starts. Uh, if you're going to put a rookie or Colton McKivitz or Jalen Moore at right guard, uh, again, more question marks. Daniel Brunskill is going to be starting for this team. There's no doubt about it. Um, just where? That's the question. We're going to be hearing from Kyle Shanahan a little bit later as well, detailing what this camp competition is going to look like. But what we're going to go through now is, man, very, very crazy journey from uh, you know high school, college, to the San Diego fleet, <laughs> which doesn't even exist anymore, to where he is now. Um, he has scrapped his way. Um, didn't even get a college scholarship and didn't even get drafted. Didn't even get invited to, like combine. Like you can just go on and on and on. It's a modern day story. If he was a quarterback, they'd be making movies about this guy's journey. I mean, it's freaking Kurt Warner esque, but he's an interior offensive lineman. So let's jump into kind of who he is and what he has done for the 49ers. He wears Jersey number 60, six foot five, 300 pounds, which is kind of that prototypical old lineman that Shanahan likes that six, five, 300 pound mark. He's 28 years old, which is crazy because he's only entering his fourth season. Technically, um, even though he's been around the NFL much longer than that, only four accrued seasons, he did have a couple years, um, with the Falcons, but never got playing time. So it never qualified as a true year. He's from Valley Center High School, California, uh, just east of Carlsbad, just um, so like, you know, m much more inland. But dude is a smart, smart, smart civil engineering major for San Diego State, the Aztecs. It's crazy to me how many players came from San Diego that are on this roster. It is, it, I think, more players from San Diego and San Diego State than any other colleges uh for the 49ers on their current roster now you look at what he did in high school 3.83 gpa in high school kids smart as hell two-year letter winner um first team all cif first team all valley league first team all north um, county uh, all these different things team captain as a senior also uh, talk about athleticism played volleyball lacrosse and was on the wrestling team uh, there is <laughs> nothing I respect more than people that uh, go through wrestling. They're just almost impossible. You know, whether I played against them, coached for them, they were incredible. I used to do, like, MMA stuff in college. Uh, the worst beating I ever got in my life was against, a, you know, a wrestler guy with a wrestler background. They just translate. They translate. It's all about leverage. It's all about using your body and counterweight. It just translates. And, again, you know, you look at whenever I'm doing a line film, Man, if I see wrestler, I, I plus 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 because it's just it teaches you how to use your body and leverage and bend and all those things. Um, walked on in 2015 to San Diego State. He did not get a scholarship offer. Um, began his college career as a tight end. He had 15 receptions, 143 yards, and two touchdowns in 27 games. But then his senior year in college went back to offensive line. Listen to some of the awards that he got. Uh, 2012 um, Offensive Co-Scout Player of the Year. Remember, walk on. Uh, like He had to grind his way up. Uh, 2016 President's Award, which is the highest standard of athletic and academic excellence that permeates this entire roster. Um, uh, Offensive Lineman of the Year in 2016, three-time Mountain West Fall All-Academic Team. Uh, 2015 Honorable Mention All Mountain, All Mountain West. 2016 Second Team. 2015 um, Honorable Mention Pro Football Focus All-American. I mean, he did well. 
um, was on the Werfel Trophy watch list, which is incredible. Um, it's kind of similar to the Walter Payton Man of the Year award for uh, college athletes. Again, goes to people that do the most community service and other things. He was huge on that. Also chosen as the Burlesworth nominee, which goes to the best college walk-on, which is incredible. Um, again, scrappy. He, he's fought for everything he's ever got. Played for the San, Di San Diego Fleet in 2019. Under former uh, Rams head coach Mike Martz. So he played the AAF. It goes bankrupt. You know, everybody got screwed. Nobody got paid. Then he joins the 49ers in 2019. So he legitimately played two football seasons <laughs> in 2019. And we went all the way to the Super Bowl. So uh, it might have broke the record for most games played in. And he played a very significant role in that 2019 um, run. He he started four games at right tackle in 2019, two games at right guard, and one and a half games. He stepped in uh, halfway through for Joe Staley, got hurt at left tackle. I mean, dude just stepped in. Did an admirable job, incredible job. He's played everywhere, center, tackle, guard, both tackle spots, as a matter of fact. He's just the Swiss Army knife of the offensive line. Now, um, yeah, and I would say this, you know, uh, most important offensive lineman besides Trent Williams. Yeah, I'd put him ahead of Mike McGlinchey, and we did in this, you know, countdown as well because there's no mainstay in the interior of that offensive line. He's got to be that. In 2019, he won the Community Relations Youth Football Ambassador Award for the 49ers and has had his best games of his career against Aaron Donald, uh, perhaps one of the better defensive players in the history of the sport. Uh, Aaron Donald did get through and make those plays in the NFC Championship in the fourth quarter, but you know they they go he goes against them twice a year and has had literally five of his best games against Aaron Donald, which just doesn't make sense to me. But hey, I love it. I love it. We don't have a lot of metrics for him um, because, again, he didn't get invited to the combine or any of those things. We do know 17 bench press reps, so that's on the low end for sure. Uh, three cone, 7.9, not great. Vertical, 28, not great. He's undrafted for a reason. He is a person that is a better football player than he is athlete and just gets the job done consistently. Never gets injured. Never gets injured. He just plays. Uh, in fact, started 20 games at right guard last year, which is awesome. Now, his journey for through the NFL is interesting. You know, undrafted free agent in 2017 for Atlanta, uh, was on their practice squad, never got activated. 2018 on their practice squad, never got activated, gets cut. Joined the fleet, um, and then the 49ers. And again, he played 12 games, I think it was, for the fleet. Yeah, 12 games for the fleet, and then 20 games for the 49ers. That's 32 games in one calendar year that that guy went through. Incredible. Um, whenever he signed with the 49ers because he was undrafted free agent, you don't get the draft four-year deal. It's restricted free agent deal, which means he had zero bargaining power until after this year. And, you know, if you look at what he's he's only made two point two million dollars. And I know that's a lot of money for a lot of people would be for me as well. But whenever you're talking about somebody that's started 40 games in the NFL, that's not that much. Now, the good news is he's going to make all of that again this year if he stays healthy and next year. He's an, undra he's an unrestricted free agent, meaning he gets to go through the whole ordeal and he's going to get paid. Probably his only contract he's going to get, uh, you know, if he does a three or four year deal because he'll be 32 when it's all said and done. And I think he's going to get that eight to $10 million range. I don't know if the 49ers keep him. I know they want to. I would love to keep him, but this dude needs to get paid. Um, he deserves to get paid. No doubt about it. Now, if you look at how this guy has, he's volume. He just doesn't get hurt first off. Uh, college, 54 games played, 27 at tight end. NFL, 47 games played. San Diego Fleet, 12 games played. Um, and he started everywhere. So let's go through some numbers. 2019 comes in, four games at right tackle, two at right guard, one and a half at left tackle. He gave up two sacks and nine pressures. And that was the Super Bowl run year. 2020 comes in. Starts eight games at right guard, then starts the second half, eight games at center. Four sacks, 31 pressures allowed that year. Last year, 20 games every freaking game, didn't miss a snap at right guard, just freaking Iron Man. Gave up five sacks, 41 pressures. Now, he's not near the top of anything. If you look at metrics from Pro Football Focus or whatever, he is a slightly above average starter. So why is he number 10 for us? One, consistency. 
Two, versatility. He just fixes everything. I don't know where his best position is. I'd probably say right tackle, um, but he's not even getting snaps there. I think he's going to probably be the starter at center eventually, but uh, let's listen to Shanahan talk about what this is going to be like this year. Um, both. Um, that's and that's stuff I, I want to talk to Brunsko about first and everything, but um, I mean, he's going to have a chance at both. We know, I mean, he started at right guard for us for a while. We know we can play center. Um, we got Jake Brindell doing that too. Um, there's going to be some competition there big time. Um, we have possible rookies to compete at right guard. So it's going to be musical chairs in there um, for this camp. It's pretty cool because we got a number of guys that we believe can start. Um, Brunskill's the only one who's shown um, people that he can do it because he's the one who's had that opportunity. A lot of the other guys, you don't know for sure until they do it for 16 games, 17, just like I'm talking about with our quarterback. But what we see in practice every day, um, we think we got a number of choices, and it'll be fun to watch them kind of all battle it out. It's got to be a competition. That's all you can say. Um, now, I don't know where. I think center. He's starting somewhere. He's starting center or he's starting right guard. That's just – there. I just cannot see a reality – where a healthy Daniel Brunskill is not starting week one or really throughout this season. Now, I will say this. If for some odd reason he's not starting, holy cow, that means some players have really surprised. Um, and not a bad situation. If Daniel Brunskill is your number six offensive lineman, not a bad situation. Now, he's going to be somewhere. Right tackle, left tackle. He's playing. I, I'm telling you that right now. I really do like this guy. And I think the value that he brings is consistency. Iron Man, he never misses a game, and versatility. So he's going to be somewhere out there. I'm excited to see what that's going to look like. I hope he wins the center job. I think that'd be best for the 49ers offense um, together. Kyle loves this guy. Uh, he loves him so much. So he's going to be out there. So that's Daniel Brunskill. I want to say thank you to Josh and Anthony, executive producers of this series. They have crushed it, and we got nine more to go.